I pass all my classes. I've done all my second year requirements. So I have fourth year status going into my fifth and final year at UBC. I'm so happy to be back and what better video to do than a post semester reset. So a little bit of news for you guys. I am actually doing summer school this year. And so as I said in the intro, I am at my fifth year at UBC. I think I talked about this maybe in another video, but in Canada, people typically do about five years to university. And so I'm in my last year. And the reason I'm doing summer school is so I can actually graduate in five years. On topic with the video, we're doing a post semester reset because I need to be prepared to go into summer semester because I am doing a full course load. And honestly, whether you're doing summer school or not, I personally feel like after a jam packed semester, so much happens, you never have enough time for self care or other responsibilities that you want to take care of or your job or whatever. So I personally feel like everybody needs a post semester reset routine. And that's what we're doing in this video. If you've been following me since my Miss Teen Canada days, I was Miss Teen Canada from I think March of 2020 to I think August of 2021. It's actually the longest reigning Miss Teen Canada, but that is besides the point. My campaign was all about self-care, self-love, self-acceptance. And so I personally feel like I learned a lot about self-care in that year. So we're actually going to be basing our reset routine on intrapersonal self-care. Intrapersonal self-care is all the internal things. So it's going to be that physical, emotional, spiritual, practical, and personal side of self-care. And intrapersonal is like your relationship to yourself, whereas like interpersonal would be your relationship and communication with other people. So this is self-care that's going to nurture yourself. This is going to be your little post-semester self-care reset routine. And we're going to be covering all five topics I just mentioned so please stick around because you're not gonna want to miss it okay so from this angle you can't see but my room is it's not as bad as I thought it was but it's pretty messy and I personally just don't function well in a messy space and the way I have it set up right now it's not super messy but because I have stuff everywhere it will get messy because of me you know always moving things using things not putting them back so let me show you what's going on behind me my desk is always the first thing to get messy like this is all my school stuff congregating over here behind me I have birthday gifts and like my birthday was like at the beginning of April but I had a recent get together with people who got me gifts so I need to get rid of that stuff. I have a ton of mail over here that I have not looked at. My bookshelf is actually broken and so that needs to be fixed. And then let me just show you my vanity because I can't with it. My vanity is always a mess and I just, I don't know, and even this picture frame like I need to get rid of it. So we just need to clean this entire space because I'm sick of like seeing all this stuff everywhere. So you guys know me, I set up a Notion page for absolutely everything. So I just thought it was absolutely essential. I set up a spring 2023 Notion page. And so as you'll see, I've kind of divided it into different sections. Every time I start like a new month or season, I kind of like outline what my vibes are. And so vibes are anything like I want to feel. I just write down things I'm looking for in my life. It just gives me an idea of what this season or month of my life is going to be like. And then I took an inspiration. So I took a character from a movie and I actually decided to take Tinkerbell. I was really inspired by her. And the reason why I chose her as like my inspiration for the spring is because Tinkerbell is someone that is like passionate and really dedicated to getting better at her craft. And that's exactly what I want to do with creating content. So I felt really inspired by that. So I chose Tinkerbell as my inspiration for the spring. I want to get into my goals, but I actually want to talk about my five focuses for the spring. I didn't really know where to structure my goals when I was first setting this page up. So I decided to break down like 
what were the most important areas of my life that I wanted to cover in the spring. And so these are my five focuses I came up with. And I used these five focuses to create my goals. They were kind of like based off of these major themes. So the first one is having more fun with content creation. I'm a huge perfectionist and sometimes I get in my own way by like, stopping or I'll refilm things and I, I'm not doing that anymore. I just want to have fun and like the more you practice something, the better you get at it. So having fun creating content, being a little bit more spontaneous and like trying new ideas. I'm kind of in like a new phase of my content. So I'm trying to figure out like what I want to do. Second one is expanding my business. So as you guys know, I one of the main sources of income for me is creating content on Instagram and TikTok, not YouTube yet but I personally love it. And so I really want to expand my business. This is one of my smaller focuses just because I do know I'm in school full time. So I kind of have a bit of awareness and I'm expecting to not be able to fully dive into this, but I kind of just want to get my feet wet for when I am finished school. My third focus, this one I'm a little bit embarrassed about, but it's okay. I think it's important to admit where you're weak or not as strong in. I guess in an area in your life and I want to be financially intelligent. I don't know. I don't know if I want to say this, but I feel like my whole life I've always been really lucky when it comes to money. Like I've always had money. I've always been able to pay for things. My parents have always really helped me out with like different little things, but I've also just aside from having money, I feel like I attract money very easily, but I want to have more knowledge about money because I feel like the more I know, the more I can attract in. It, it's weird that I like, I feel like money is something that flows to me easily, which is awesome, but it's odd because I feel like I don't know a lot about money and saving and investing. And I, my mindset is like, the more I know, the more money I can make and generate and attract. So I want to learn more about money. The fourth one is major decluttering. And so, I did talk about this when I talked about my vibes. I'm building a home studio and I'm also redoing my bedroom. So I'm trying to get rid of as many things as I can. I feel like when you hold on to things, you're almost holding on to like space in your life. And when you have extra stuff, you don't have room to make new memories because your stuff has old memories attached to it. I, I'm like going into it a little bit too much, but I just want to get rid of my like stuff I don't want anymore and bring in room for new things. And my last focus is getting back into wellness. I feel like I haven't been as into wellness lately and I feel like it's just because I feel like sometimes the wellness industry has such an all or nothing approach to life and that's just personally never been me. I'm I'm like really balanced and not even like having a healthy cookie as being balanced. Like I will eat a regular cookie as being balanced and I think there's nothing wrong with that. And so, yeah, I just wanna get back into wellness and have like a healthy relationship with it and like working out and eating well and all that kind of vibe. So, and I, I think more it's not even getting back into it because I really don't even know if I've fallen off of it that hard, but it's more that it's like, I just want to be excited about it again and passionate about it because I feel like I had that passion and I kind of lost it because the pressure there is to just be well and be healthy and stuff like that. So that is like one of my focuses as well. Welcome to the new family gym. It is so much nicer than what it used to look like. I'm so obsessed with it. I just love the new weight rack. I've got all my mats here, my bala bangles, my yoga blocks, and it's honestly been so great for helping me stay inspired in the gym. We also have a new bike. We have the treadmill, the bench, then a lot of space to do like floor workouts, which I do a lot of. The gym obviously isn't fully finished, but we're gonna get new blinds, get new closet doors, and I'm really excited because it kind of looks like a really nice home gym. During the semester, I feel like I was pretty good about, like when I was working out, I was pretty consistent with it. I would work out like at least three to four times a week, mostly four to five if I'm being honest, especially near the other end of the semester. I only really fell off working out when I got sick and that's been a reoccurring theme for me in the last year, but I'm excited because I'm finally starting to feel like I'm getting a bit of a routine. And this is actually kind of funny because three years ago, I can't believe it was three years ago, but in 2020, I followed her June calendar and that was the first 
time I think I stumbled across blog Pilates and Pilates is my favorite type of workout. I also like that Cassie includes weights here and there. And so I've also been just doing that at my own pleasure, like adding weights in to make it more challenging. And I feel like that's been the hardest thing for me with working out is I'm, I'm constantly bored. I feel like I've done every single type of workout. I don't want to spend money on workout classes. I don't think it's a waste of money, but I do think that it's not the best place for me to put my money right now. And they're expensive. The only thing I don't like about it is she works out six days a week. I just think six days a week is not really a sustainable workout routine for me. I want to like try to balance like being consistent and disciplined with listening to my body. And I think that's why I've had such a hard time getting back into a workout routine because I feel like if I'm disciplined, I am following a workout regime and I'm not necessarily listening to my body. But if I'm listening to my body, I'm not necessarily following a set workout routine. So what I've decided to do today is I'm gonna start by doing the workout routine she has for the day and then I've really been feeling like doing like yoga. She's got this like yoga for split stretch. Yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling and I'm gonna get into the workout and we'll see how it goes. Think, after you, I would have put it all on hold. Now I'm playing in the sand till it turns to gold. Might as hands, but we all grow old. Can't have my soul, let my heart turn stone. Guess I gotta say it twice, it ain't my fault. Every little thing got a price, that's what I thought. That's what they taught. Yeah, I'm gonna take my chance to lie, drop. Mm -hmm. Before we get into emotional self-care, I just wanted to mention that my semester ended like about a week ago. I finished school on a Thursday. It's now a Wednesday when I'm filming this. So I took like at least like four to five days of just like resting or doing whatever I want. Like I kind of was productive, but I kind of felt like being productive, but I gave myself a couple days to just do nothing, not have a to-do list, just relax. And I feel like that is something that is so essential after a long semester. University is just so overpacked and you're always learning so much information and I feel like you just need a complete break after. I personally feel like I can like keep going until the semester is over and then once the semester is over I'm completely depleted and burnt out. So I just wanted to mention that I think it's a really good idea to just give yourself a little break up to a full week whatever you need and then you can jump back in and start your reset routine and then you can get back to your regular life and get on track with your regular everyday routine. So when you're ready to jump back into life and you want to start moving past the semester and you're ready to start resetting, I recommend doing a little reflection. And so you guys know if you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, I'm always reflecting at the end of the month. These are the journal prompts that were really helpful for me, helping me navigate how the semester went and where I wanna go from here. Overall, how was the semester? So basically just summarizing, like what was it like? I kind of did like out of 10, just kind of like a general, what was the vibe of the semester? The next one is fave class, least fave class, and then you can kind of say why. Lessons learned. So this, I kind of have two that are similar. I have lessons learned and what can you apply to your own life? So I feel like the lessons learned section can kind of be like, what would you not do? Or what was something you struggled with, like a challenge, like for, and then what can you apply to your own life? So like taking your learning and like what is actually applicable to your life and you can use. If you're taking any like psych courses, I'm a nutrition and psych student. So like pretty much everything is applicable to my life, which is so nice. I'm so lucky, but not every degree is like that. So I think especially if yours is not, you should try to see what you can grasp from your like learning and add it to your life because I feel like going through school can be really challenging and it just feels like you're going, 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 going. And even if you have a goal at the end, like even if you know what you wanna do after school, it's still super hard to stay motivated because it's kind of like, 
you can feel like what is the point sometimes. I think applying your learning to your life is really important, or even if it's not your learning, applying those lessons you learned. This one's really important. How burnt out were you on a scale from one to 10? These two are pretty obvious with any reflection. What can you do better next time? And then what are you proud of? We are tackling personal self-care. This one is my absolute favorite. I decided to solely focus on hobbies. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I have tons of hobbies. I am a hobby girl. I personally feel like hobbies are so important and meaningful in your life because it's really important to pursue all your interests. It adds to your personality and you only live once. I personally feel like you should try to experience everything you've wanted to experience. So I'm not even going to go on about this because I just want to get into it because I'm so excited about the hobby I'm sharing with you guys. And it's actually a hobby I started when I was 20 and I'm now 22. So I'm actually taking it back up, which is so exciting because that is something you can do with hobbies. You can try them out and they work for a season of your life and maybe you move on and forget about them. And then a couple years later or months or whenever you can pick them back up, which is so fun and exciting. So today we are going to be doing scrapbooking, which I feel like is such a popular hobby. I feel like people always want to try it, but it sounds like it's such an undertaking. And I'm going to show you how I do mine and like that it's not actually as big a deal as you think. This is my scrapbook. I think it's about 25 to 50 pages and I actually got it on Amazon. It wasn't that expensive. I think it was maybe a maximum of $25, but honestly, like I've gotten a lot of use out of it. The pages are really thick and it comes in this plain white cover, which I'm actually going to cover in like different stickers. I just haven't started doing that yet. And so it'll be really cool because I can put like all different kinds of stickers on it. So it'll be really interesting to see what it looks like when I'm done decorating the cover. Also, sorry if you can hear any noise. My brother is outside with his friends playing basketball and ball hockey. And honestly, if I wasn't filming this video, I would consider joining them because that is so fun and totally on theme with having hobbies. I kind of wanted to show you guys an example of the latest scrapbook spread I did because I want to show you guys like how many different elements you can include and different kinds of things you can put in your scrapbook. As I said, I started scrapbooking when I was 20 and I'm now 22, but I kind of wanted my scrapbook to be like for a purpose. And I was like, I want to scrapbook my 20s. So because I took that like two year break and I didn't really scrapbook in between, I kind of had this great idea because I restarted right around the time of my 22nd birthday. So I was like, okay, why don't I recap my year when I was 21? So I did a 21 recap and it's super cute. I wrote myself a little letter and then I've got pictures from things I did when I was 21. Then I included 21 wins and things I learned, which I also have TikTok videos on all the 21 things I did and learned and all my wins from that year. So you can definitely check those out on TikTok if you want. But all these pictures, I've got a picture of me going to my first Broadway show, which was Aladdin. I've got a picture of me here in New York when it was New York Fashion Week. So yeah, like I've got like craft paper, I've got photos. I've also like cut out photos to show like my poses. I've got envelopes, I've got stickers. I've got those like cutout stickers. I have washi tape. And then I'll just show you the second page of the spread because I included all 21 things. So this is the second page in the spread or I guess the second two pages. And then, you know, I have my staycation with my best friend, my profile picture on Instagram, when I dyed my hair, reconnecting to old hobbies is the craft store I've been going to since I was a little kid photo of my parents, my first time going to crumble cookie. This is like super cute and you can see there's like a variety of things here. I included little quotes, a book I read that I loved and resonated with. So now we're currently working on a spread that I am so excited about. I had this great idea and it's going to be called main character energy. I'm not completed this spread, but basically I printed out pictures of all the different characters I feel that I resonate with slash represent in some way. So I'm going to finish this spread. I've been drinking a little, I've been thinking too much about you All the time and the love that you gave me All I gave you was a nicotine addiction and an empty room Couple life lessons at 22 After all this shit I put you through, I don't blame you I hate me too Originally, I 
actually filmed a little spiritual self-care session, but I kind of realized when looking back at the footage that it only really covered one area of spiritual self-care, and it is such a diverse area of life. So I decided it would probably be more effective to discuss different things you can do to really connect with your spirituality. In general, spirituality is a connection to a higher power or purpose, and so you can do this through religion, through meditation, astrology, tarot readings, crystals, manifesting affirmations. You kind of get the gist of where I'm going with this. And there's so many more ways that I haven't even listed or probably don't even know about that you can connect with your spirituality. For spiritual self-care, I personally think the best way to approach it, either tap into the spiritual routines that you already have and love and are effective in your life, or you can discover your spirituality in another way because I feel like it's really interesting to merge different types of ideologies in your life. I think you can learn a lot from different places and I think it's really cool to dive into all that. I know I definitely have in the past and it was really beneficial.